Hey, Mar Mike here at Texas HQ underneath my LA145 John Deere. And today we're going to talk about drag braces. I'm going to show you how to replace and upgrade them. First is just to give you an overview of what a drag brace does. Uh, so it starts up here and the drag brace connects to the front wheel hub. And then it runs back to the steering. And underneath, and as you turn the steering wheel, it turns the drag brace, which turns the front wheel hub. Now this drag brace here is totally jacked up. That bend is not supposed to be there. Uh, we had a bit of an issue at the mower rack when I flipped the mower and uh, we definitely bent the drag brace thrown off the steering. So what we're gonna do today is replace her with a much improved drag brace, this guy here, which is much straighter. And what's cool about these, the new ones have, uh, they're adjustable there at the end. So just like a tie rod, you can adjust it in and out to align your steering where the stock ones do not have that. So with that, we'll get started. All right, so the first step is you wanna unhook the drag brace from your, your front spindle assembly here. Now I've got the wheel removed just for a better video. And <laughs> hopefully yours is not as bent up as mine. So my drag brace is so bent up, the front wheel is facing forward, totally trashed. Uh, so what you want to do is you take a 15 millimeter or you can slide it right there on top of that flat piece of metal and that's going to hold it while you undo the bottom nut which is a lock nut 17 millimeter i like using the impact wrench some of these can get stuck on there i mean you can use a regular wrench but as you'll see impacts are always the way to go if you got them all right and that way when you pull it up you get the whole ball joint assembly and the drag brace if you're just doing the drag brace without the ball joint assembly uh, you would put that 15 millimeter on there and then just unhook, undo this bolt on top, which is another 17, and you can pry that off. All right, so now we've moved underneath the lawnmower. We've got the front of the drag brace unhooked. Next, we need to figure out how to unhook the back of the drag brace. Now, the drag brace is hooked onto the sector gear, which is hooked on to the pinion gear. So the way this is set up, you turn that, like the sector gear is all jacked up. When you turn it, you can see it turns those drag braces. Now, if you have little kid hands, you got little girly hands, you may be able to sneak your hands up above the sector gear to loosen up that lock nut, but it's real tight. So what I like to do, I like to remove the entire uh, sector gear. That way we can get to it easily. Now, in order to do that, uh, the first step is that we need to remove the pinion gear. Now, to do that, this shaft goes all the way up to the steering wheel. And it's got this lock nut on the bottom. Now, my favorite method if you've been watching my videos, you know I'm a big fan of impact wrenches. To put that sucker on there, bam, comes right off. And then, you know, a lot of people online are whacking on that, that steering shaft. I don't like to do that. What I do is just give it a good jerk from the steering wheel up top. You see it just pops right off. Real simple situation there. Then you have the pinion gear removed. All right, let's say you don't have a super cool impact wrench like Mo or Mike, and you still have to get that pinion gear off. What you're gonna need to do is hold that shaft while you twist that nut. So you can get these uh, big arse pliers like I got, hold it, then get your three quarter inch socket, twist it off that way. Or if you have a female around the house or a kid, just have them hold the steering wheel up top. That'll hold that steady while you get that nut off. A pipe wrench works too, and then it just slides off. Either way, you get that pinion nut off. All right, so the next step after you get the pinion gear off is that we need to take off essentially this mounting brace that the sector gear is held to. It's got two bolts on each side, but you'll see in order to pull it off, you have to remove this bar here. It's blocking it. What that is, that's the clutch pedal. So it's real simple to do. It's just got this little clip that you just, it's just pressed on there. You come off with a screwdriver, preferably a big screwdriver. You pop that off and then you can just pull it on out. Sometimes you might have turned the steering wheel a little bit, get out of the way. And then that's out of the way. Okay, once we get that pesky clutch pedal out of the way, we can take off these two bolts holding that on there. What that is, it's a 10 millimeter bolt. It's threaded in there, so all you gotta do is get a ratchet. You know me, my air ratchets. I got my mini one. Getting her done. Uh-oh. quite have the torque big boy's got. 
So you just pop that out. I have no idea why John Deere uses metric. It must have been made in Canada or something. There you go. Come on, baby. Give it to me. All right. And now let's move on to the other side. All right, here we're on the other side. We just had those two bolts. We don't have any bars to take out, just those two bolts. Now, between shots, I lubed up my air ratchets and put a little oil in her, so if this little one doesn't get it done here, she may be history. You know, I gotta have horsepower on my tools. Oh, there we go. A little lube makes everything better, right? <laughs> That's what she said. All right, let's get it. Ah, oh, hey, look at that, man. Always lube your air ratchets. Makes a huge difference. And with that, <laughs> she comes down and we have some access. All right, I'm at the mower mic shop table here and I've got the steering bracket. And as you can see now, this is underneath where we can actually get a socket on that 17 millimeter. Boom, boom. And then you turn it over. You're gonna slide your 15 millimeter right there. Same as the front end just a little harder to get to. So just pop it right there and get the socket on the under, underside. There we go. So you can see there, we get the drag brace off. Just do it to the other side, just the same. This one's gonna be a little tighter, I'm assuming. Super fast drag brace. <laughs> Take it off. As you can tell. All right. The next step is to install the new drag braces. So what we do is we flip it upside down first of all. And you want to align your drag braces. Now remember these drag braces are specific to a certain side, so make sure to line them up as far as with the bend where it goes towards the outside, like so. It'll be down and towards the out on each side, like there's the right, there's the left. So to line them up, we just take that bolt, and it's just gonna slide up from underneath, it goes through the hole in the second gear, and then we line up sector gear bolt, and we put a, this one actually has a 13 millimeter to hold the bottom of it, see there, you want to hold that there and then just crank her down. And you can crank it down all the way. But don't worry, you want to get this tight. You can notice you can get it tight and crank it down because these ball joints actually pivot back and forth. So you want that tight on the sector gear. So we'll go ahead and get the other side on. Slides in there like so. Hopefully I'm a little smoother on this one so I look like a freaking professional. Then you then get your 13 millimeter or whatever your new drag brace size is. And then this one here is a 17 millimeter on this side. All right, with that, you got your new drag braces installed and we'll get her back on the mower. All right, the next step after we get the new, the sector gear and the drag braces installed is we need to get this back up underneath the lawn mower. So as you push it up, make sure you line up the drive shaft, I mean the actual steering shaft slides through that hole. And there's another deal right here, slides through that. And you just gotta kind of wiggle it up until it gets flush. Takes a little finagling. Just start your bolts on the side, those 10 millimeter bolts. Mine seem to fly all over the place. All right, so I got those two, and then you'll get the other side. All right, so after you get your 
steering bracket mounted up with those four bolts. See, it's got its new fancy drag brace and the sector gear. Next, we need to get these, these shift shaft that connects to the back of the transmission. Pull it up here. First, it comes through that bracket that's hanging down. And then it goes through the actual pedal bracket. Slide it through. All right. And then you just use that same little, uh, whatchamacallit, doodad. Slide it over the end. And you get All right. So we've got the steering bracket mounted up underneath the mower with the new drag braces. But before you put that pinion gear on, slow down. We've got to come out to the front of the mower and we want to get these wheels straight and then we're going to hook up the drag braces. So we'll do a little mower mic, mower alignment. We don't have any fancy mower alignment tools. You just kind of kick them to really look straight. I swear that's straight. And then down underneath you got your new drag brace and you want to match that drag brace up with the hole in the actual spindle. Now these are adjustable, which is a huge advantage over the stockies. So then you just twist it to where you think it'll line up. Right about there looks good. And then you just slide it through the spindle. And then you go ahead and you tighten it down, just like we took off. These take the 13 and the 17 down underneath. All right, and with that, we finally got our drag braces installed. I know this is a little more difficult, but just take your time, follow step by step, and you'll get there. It is totally worth it, especially upgrading those new adjustable drag braces. Now you have control over your alignment, which the stock ones do not do. So you'll stop tearing up your grass and your tires. So I hope you appreciated it, enjoyed it. Please make comments, make fun of me, whatever you want to do. And subscribe, let's have some more fun. Mower Mike out.